Is that right, Steve? Well, your mum's so fat that she's barred from all them all-you-can-eat buffets. Every single one of them in in the world. <laughs> Guess who's back in the van with a ham pump and a baby lamb? Yeah, I'm about to tell you all who I am. I'm Kev Ashford, and this is Van Cam. I nearly lost it for a second then, but I definitely com showed the composure and came through fighting like a champion because that's what I am. Hello at every single one of you. I hope everybody is all right. And welcome to this week's edition of the Not World Famous Fan Cam. Loads coming up this week. It'll all be coming up along the bottom of the screen. There'll be Fellaini Watch, Big Van Cam Debate, all that shit. Cockstroker of the Week. I've got a top three this week. I'll be telling you all about that. If you are watching live, it's the live premiere. There was about 30 people. Oh, yeah. Kev's going big. Yeah, 30 people watching last week, uh, new Van Cam record. This is going to be the regular thing for each week because it opens up the old super chat. People can actually comment live. So if you're doing that now, fair play to you. And a big, massive, don't know what that is, uh, shout out to Sion Jones who last week threw in five of the English pounds. He said, don't read this out. Get yourself a pint. I did get myself a pint and I've read it out because I thought the generosity was so nice that I had to read it out. So there you go. Uh, there'll be more messages uh, read out later on. That'll be in your comments. Uh, I was in Wales last week. That's why there was no van cam. So I don't know what you did on Friday. Maybe you actually took your missus for a meal or whatever. You know, did something normal. But we're back to normal this week. Don't be getting off that couch. Crack open the beers, pin back your ears for a lesson in football etiquette. Is that the word? I don't know. Uh, anyway, let's get on with it. Since I last seen you, like I said, I was in Wales. Uh, people often say, Kev, you know, you used to be a right wild one. You used to go out on a Friday, come home on a Sunday. I am still capable of that. So in Wales, what did Kev get up to? Here we go, man. Look, I went on a zip line. Did the old zip line, uh, there's me on the swings looking right happy and also went down a slide. And people still, you know, debate and say that Kev Ashford, he's got a bit older, he's got the family thing going on, you know, he used to be wild. I mean, if that doesn't prove, I mean, Ozzy Osbourne once bit the head off a bird live on stage. So what, man? I've done the zip line. This was all in one day. Zip line, slide and the swings. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I've still got it. Pete Doty ain't got shit on me doing his little session weekends or whatever. Oh, I'm having a couple of drinks. Yeah, I think you've just seen the evidence that Kev is still pretty much rock and roll. Since I last spoke to you, we've played three games. Uh, we went to Stamford Bridge. Should have won. Uh, really disappointed to concede that last late goal. It sort of felt like a defeat, but in a strange way before the match, you know, if somebody would have said you're going to draw, you'd have been like... Yeah, sort of take that. We've got a shit record there. But I think it was just a fact it was more or less the, the last kick of the game. And that prick who celebrated in front of Mourinho. Ooh, if Kev could have been there. Have a bit of that, you dickhead. Do you know what I mean? Can't be doing that. And it's good that the FA, who I am not a big fan of, have actually come out and charged him. Yeah, it might be six grand. Probably earns that in a couple of hours or whatever. But that kind of shit in front of Mourinho people are saying oh Mourinho deserved it and that one thing that did do me tits in was Mourinho after the game this all this shit to the Chelsea fan just let it go it was in the past yeah you won them three league titles and you try to remind them about it but they're not asked. they go through managers like Katie Price goes through boyfriends or husbands even and if you don't know who Katie Price is uh take it from me She's had loads of them. That's that's the analogy. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So then we moved into a game against Juventus from uh, the highs of the Chelsea match, showing what we could do in the second half at Stamford Bridge. Disappointed. Uh, I think it was sad. That's the word I used at the end of it. Sort of heartbreaking in a way. It shows how far we have fallen behind in European status. Juventus absolutely bossed us, did a job on us. And yeah, I think it just shows how far behind we have fallen because Juventus were in cruise control. 
totally dominated us and we, we just never really looked like doing anything they were defensively solid did a job on us uh, and then there was the Everton game where we're 2-0 up Chris Morley makes a challenge and makes the game a lot more difficult towards the end than what it really should have been uh, Tony Marshall, Mar Marshall Tony Marshall who's he don't know yeah but Tony Marshall no I've got, I've got it wrong again I'm going to have to keep this in this is some crap Tony Marshall uh, has really stepped up, really stepped up. You know, he's becoming a big player for United. And we've always said, you know, everybody in the comments section on Van Cam has always said, keep Martial in, let him have a run of games. I think now that is coming to fruition. Yeah, God, I'm struggling today again. Yeah, I mean, basically, yeah, he's doing well. Doing well, Tony. Tony Marshall scores again. Keep him in the team, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's crack on because I am talking absolute horse shit. The first thing we're going to do this week, as we always do here, is a thing called Fellaini Watch. This is where we look at a man with bushy hair who gets paid a shitload of money for playing for the best team in the world when really he's like an imposter. He shouldn't be there. How did he ever get here? David Moyes, that's why he got here. Aye, he was always our first target. We wanted to sad. Oh, what am I doing here? You know, David Boys basically said Fellaini was always his first choice signing. Yeah. Bollocks! Why did you leave it to the last second on deadline day to sign him then? We had to pay five million more. Twenty-seven million we paid for him. Can't believe it, man. This is Fellaini watch. Tommy big ball in. Here's a big man. No. <laughs> you bushy head tit. Rap the Casper. Rap the Casper. This is Fellaini Watch. It's a part of the show where we look at what that big, useless, bushy-haired tit has been up to. And I need to take you back to the aftermath of the Juventus defeat. Yeah, we got totally outplayed, outclassed. Mourinho comes out with one of the most bizarre comments you will probably hear in his managerial career. Jose Mourinho said, and I quote from the Jose iPad, uh, I missed Fellaini against Juventus. I didn't. I backed it up. This is the quote, man. No Fellaini to change the direction of the game like we do so many times. This is what he told reporters. Mourinho's on crack cocaine or something like Spice. Well, you can't really talk when you're on Spice. Not that I know. Just seen a documentary about it. But Jesus wet, man. We've just been beaten by Juventus. It, it was heartbreaking watching it. You know, how many years behind are we Juventus? How many... Behind these big teams in Europe, we were shit, absolutely shit. And Mourinho, clutching at straws, man, has actually said that we missed Fellaini. Christ almighty, we got beat 1-0 on the night. It could have been more, but I'll tell you something. It would have been more if that big, bushy-haired dickhead would have been in the team. So no, Jose, we did not miss him to change the game what running around like a dickhead in the middle of the midfield a little triangle passes round him oh the bush can't get anywhere near him with his elbows that's your dose this week my friends of Fellaini watch that was Fellaini watch Make sure you get commenting if you disagree with me that Mourinho is totally off his tits to say that we missed Marouane Fellaini against Juventus. <laughs> the biggest banter in the world. That award is definitely going to Mourinho. And if you're sick of all the shit that I give Fellaini, then don't watch, yeah? Don't watch. Anyway, next up, we are going to do the big Van Cam debate. Uh, let's see what I can throw in this week, and I'll have the poll result from last week. Let's do this shit. Let's spin it. The big Van Cam debate. This is the big Van Cam debate. Now, last week's debate was on Luke Shaw, and I set the question: Did Luke Shaw deserve a new contract? Simply for the fact that there were some United fans out there going, "What's he done? Why does he deserve a new contract?" What's he ever done? You know what I mean? And he's been rewarded with a new bumper pay contract till 2023, which I said last week, it sort of safeguards the club because they're not going to lose him for free. They can get a fee for him. But more importantly, he should be United's left back for the next 10 plus years easily. And he's been United's best player with David Heyer. 
this season. 93%. Are you ready for this? Tension. Let's get some noise or something. Nobody here. It's just me on my own. 93% said yes. Luke Shaw deserved a new contract. So that lets me know what the Van Cam community are thinking on that one. Let's put that one to one side and let's delve straight into this week's question. I'm just going to throw it out there. Romelu Lukaku. I've said that right, then I? Let's just call him Lukaku. Well, it's his name, isn't it, Cernet? Look, Anyway, Lukaku. Are United better with or without him? Yeah? I'm just throwing it out there, man. And this is on the back of the Everton result. The fact that Lukaku was actually dropped for this game. Read into it what you want. He was having a rest. That guy does not need a rest, man. This is not a guy who's giving 100%, running around, working defences, stretching the back four, the back three, depending on what's, you know, formation. This guy was not rested. He was taken out because he's not scored for what? About 10 games or something. Sure, somebody will tell me. Uh, I should know that because I'm a football expert. But stats are not my thing. I always say that. But listen, he's not scored for a shitload of games. He's out of form. His first touch is piss poor. His hold up play does he even have hold up play. And he's not sprinting. He's not making any room for anybody else. He's not stretching defences. I think seeing Rashford up top, yeah, Rashford doesn't have the hold up play. But he makes them runs. And these are vital things, man. If you make them runs, you pull a defender to one side. Oh, hello. I was going to say Fellaini comes charging through the centre midfield. Uh -uh. Pogba, you know, and the gang, they can come through and score goals. That's, that's what you watch Van Kamp for each week because I am just a fountain of knowledge. So, this week the question is, Lukaku, better with... Or without, with or without you, I can't live. Gone well off now anyway, but with or without Lukaku, are United better? The question will come up properly at the bottom here. Click on the eye up here, get involved. Uh, better with or better without him. And there is no sitting up on that fence. Why would you want to sit up there? Apart from the fact that you're going to look a complete and utter tit. People are getting on with their lives down here on deck because they made a, you know, with or without decision, a yes or a no. But you, <laughs> like I said last week, everyone, you couldn't make a decision. Yeah, I've rinsed that one last week. Just get involved, man. Yeah, I'll tell you the result next week. The big Van Cam debate. That was the big Van Cam debate. Sorry, this song makes me very emotional. Don't know why. Barely own the lyrics. Uh, make sure you cast your vote for this week. You need to do that. Otherwise, there's absolutely bugger all point of actually doing it in the first place. There's just no point at all. I'm repeating myself. Next, we're going to do Cock Stroker of the Week. If you've not seen it before, it, yeah, it's Cock Stroker of the Week. Now, if you're a Cock Stroker, it means you're not great, are you? So let's find out who's got the top spot this week in Cockstroker of the Week. The Cockstroker of the Week. <laughs> you tit! This is Cockstroker of the Week. We do this every week. I'm repeating myself as I do every week. But there might be new people watching who'll be going, Who's this dickhead? Anyway, this week I've got a top three coming in at number three. And it's last time's... Winners, I was going to say last week's, but I wasn't here last week. Uh, the last time I did Van Cam, the FA got the top spot. They were the cock, oh, sorry, cock strokers of the week. This week, they come in at number three. Uh, the last time they actually won it, it was because they were trying to charge, or they were going to charge Jose Mourinho for saying, Sons of bitches! Yeah, down the microphone or whatever. After the emotional victory against Newcastle, in which we were 2-0 down, 1-3-2. Anyway, that's in the in history anyway. But they're in it this week at number three because they made a stunning climb down. In fact, they've actually claimed that they will not be pressing any charges against Jose Mourinho. They've actually dropped the charges, which is unbelievable. I should be giving them an award for saying well done. 
But I think it just shows how fucked up the FA is. Uh, the FA statement read, A charge against Jose Mourinho for allegedly using uh, language which was abusive or insulting or improper has been found not proven following an independent regulatory... Leg reg regulatory... Yeah, yeah, yeah! You know what I mean. Commission hearing today related to the incident in the Newcastle match. That's your number three sorted. Number two... Number two this week is pretty incredible, actually. Somebody rang into Talk Sport, the sports bar with Andy Goldstein and Jason Cundy, and made an outlandish uh, statement. In fact, this is his actual opinion. I'm going to play the clip now. Brace yourselves. There is absolutely mad fuckery going on in this clip. If everyone's in form, I think Ronaldo struggles at this stage in his career to get in our team. What are you talking think... about, John? Well, who do you want I... up top, Lukaku or Ronaldo? No, obviously, right now, I want Ronaldo. But no. if everyone's in form, Sanchez is in form, uh, Lukaku's in form, but everyone's playing well, Rashford's in form. Uh, if Lukaku's in form, if Lukaku's flying, who do you want, Lukaku <laughs> or Ronaldo? Lukaku at this stage of the career. <laughs> no, John. <laughs> From what from what I saw tonight, the, the instant the, there's a, the, just looking at the two teams without you know the, the oh, one sorry sorry the one sorry Jay, sorry <laughs> sorry I, I'm in shock mm. I, genu John you've actually just said you'd rather have Lukaku than Ronaldo an informed Lukaku than an informed Ronaldo it, 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 at this stage in his career he's not the player he once was who and I think Lukaku over the next couple of years who's who's not the who's player. not the player he was. Ronaldo. Even half the player is better than Lukaku. John, well, John. Uh, he's, Andy, he's the greatest the goal scorer. Fan. Of course I am, John, but I'm a realist. Ronaldo's the greatest, probably the greatest goal scorer of all time in our, in the modern game. And he's still banging them in for fun in Italy. Oh, Italy, though, isn't it? Italy, though. I, I think it, I think bringing <laughs> back into our United team now, I think he would struggle. Who's got John? How, seriously, how many minutes did you say? Honestly. Three? Because it is sounding silly, John. Oh, John's gone. There you go. Woo! You heard it from the horse's mouth. He's obviously not a horse, but... Listen, man, this guy that rang into Talk Sport claiming to be a United fan would rather have Lukaku in his side than Ronaldo. Now, let's come on. I mean, Ronaldo is arguably the greatest player of all time. Look at what he's done. Look at him when he was at United. People still bang on and argue this fact that Ronaldo is not as good as he used to be. Now, he's not, but he's still the best. If not the great, you know, he's up there with... Messi, still at the age of 33 or whatever he is, he's still doing it. And unlike Messi, you know, Ronaldo has tested himself. He's done it in the Premier League. He's done it in the Spanish League. He's done it on the international stage. He's now ripping it up in Italy. Some people say, oh, Italy, this, that. He's still done it. He's still tested himself and he's done it everywhere he's gone. He's scored goals. Ask yourself this, folks, as United fans, who would you rather have in your team? Ronaldo... Ronaldo, that was a bit of a, sorry, Ronaldo or Lukaku? <laughs> yeah, gas yourself, it's absolute mint, it's like a joke that, he's in at number two. Okay, and that leaves me to tell you who has taken home top spot this week, number one, cockstroker of the week goes to Manchester United fanzine red issue. Now, this is a fanzine that sort of ceased to selling their, their actual fanzine outside the ground about four or five years ago. Claimed that, you know, modern day fans and all that don't buy into their kind of sense of humour and stuff. Now, I must admit that uh, part of my sort of tradition, routine, match day routine of going to Old Trafford was buying Red Issue. Absolutely loved the read. Yes, they were controversial sometimes bits you know you're a bit close to the bone there and all that but it does seem that they've tried far too hard with this one to be controversial and i know they're not asked but if you look at their twitter account they've probably lost about two or three thousand followers like i said they are not going to be asked about it uh, whoever hides behind this account and actually put the tweet out it was to do uh, with the death of 
Leicester City's owner in the helicopter crash last week. I did put a little thing at the start of the, the, the video. Uh, I don't want to touch on it and talk about it too much. I don't, you know, want to go there. But I felt that Cox Stroke of the Week had to go to Red, red Issue because... Uh, on the night of the tragedy, well, after the match, when we, we all found out about it and the news come out, they tweeted out this, which read, uh, do the Glazers have a helicopter? Now, regardless of what you think of the Glazers, you know, people will stand on the terraces and say, you know, he's going to die, he's going to die. You know, Glazers, cut them open from head to toe, whatever. That's, you know, a bit of a terrorist song or whatever that people will sing. But to actually, in the light of that tragedy, when we were sort of learning what had actually happened, to actually come out with that, uh, I just think it's sad, pathetic. It was well ill-timed, well ill-judged. And I'm surprised it got as many retweets and likes as it did. That's probably what they wanted from a, that account. Uh, I think the best thing is just not to basically get involved in you know that tweet don't give him the time of day and if you look back through the tweets the tweets he put out after that uh, it does seem like numbers have gone well down because people aren't interacting with that account anymore but like i said like i always say they are the cock strokers of the week for this week i like it's a touchy subject but i couldn't think of anyone other more fitting to take home the crown i'm sure they won't be asked about it anyway you know what they're like so there you go Cockstroker of the week. So there we have it. Number one this week is Red Issue for them uh, comments, which I think were bang out of order. But let me know what you think. Maybe you're one of these fans. There was a few United fans who were saying, oh, don't get your knickers in a twist and all this and throw around this term grief junkies that people seem to love tragedies like this. And I, I just can't understand all that. I mean, it's coming from a United fan like myself who, you know, we have the Munich air disaster thrown at us so much. Uh, it's it's just distasteful. It, it does does my head in, to be honest. So let me know what you think. Get commenting. Uh, I think there's a reason that that red issue actually went to pot when you think about it. And it's probably because of views like that and putting shit out like that. You look at Red News, uh, run by Barney. That's absolutely bob on. United, we stand. Uh, Andy Mitten, both really good at what they do and run really good fanzines. So uh, let me know what you think anyway, and next we will do your yeah. comments. This is your comments. It's the time of the show where you shower a wankers, get your say on anything. It doesn't particularly have to be about football. Right, this is a name. Scott Halstenskard said, Loving the live commentary, always on point. Big Kev. Yeah, it's big doll. Uh, the live commentary is good crack because I think everyone, we're all watching it together, aren't we? It's brilliant, man. I like it anyway. Uh, Spee Malo, some names here. All right, I'm going to say it. Valin Dingham is an absolute legend. Get him on an episode of Van Cam when you hit 3,000 subscribers. Well, this is your, you know, this is your opportunity now to go out and spread the word of Van Cam. We all know that John Valendingham is a legend. The man has got beautiful hair. If I was in charge of the people that do them shampoo adverts, I would have Valendingham in it for sure. If I was in a rock band, he'd be my lead singer. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know John Valendingham, this is a guy who actually got a Van Cam t-shirt printed up himself, went out all around America getting photographs and spreading the word of Van Cam. That, my friends, is dedication. Kieran McCormick said, Buzzing, I met you on site, top man. Bit of a funny story, that one, actually, because I was out on site the other day, and, you know, the amount of times I have been noticed and get spotted while I'm out and about, you know, I could count it on one hand. <laughs> but anyway, I pull up on site, and there's this lad staring at me, and the, the finger comes out. He looks at me, he said, You're that guy, aren't you? I said, I thought, Where's this going? He said, Off YouTube. Uh, he went on to say that he used to watch me on the United stand and he said I was the only person that talked a load of sense. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Uh, Robert Ingram said, you know, Kev, I'm sick and tired of Jose talking about his past achievements. This is something I did actually say earlier. He said he's always after games putting his three fingers up. Uh, Sir Alex Ferguson never bragged about his achievements because he never had to. Besides, he doesn't have enough fingers. He wouldn't, would he? You'd need, 
You'd need to be living in Burnley to have that many fingers. I think they only have six on each hand anyway. Jeff Wardrop, who is an absolute legend when it comes to at Kev's Van Cam on the Facebook page. Oh, just dropped it in. See what I'm doing there. Uh, he said, Kev, I don't know if you've ever watched Full Time Devils Takeover on XS Radio YouTube. Uh, I have messaged them and asked them to get you on. Very nice of you. I like the fact that everybody... I mean, I look at it. You're you're like my agents out there. You go and find the work for Kev. I ain't got time for that. Man's trying to do... Run this YouTube channel and drive this fucking thing. Do you know what I mean? Sorry for the swearing there. Just dropped it in again. Uh, Alexander Martin-Jones said, Hey, Kev, looks like you decided to take up farming. Cheeky bastard. Kev would never wear one of them flat caps. Cheeky bastard, getting on my tits a bit you, you're going to rub me up the wrong way sunshine and you'll get a Fozu Menza to the face. Uh, Mark Fenton on the Facebook page again said, hey Kev, is it a lucky like it or is it really you, oh lord? <laughs> I'm having that one, do you know what I mean? It's not often you get compared to being, you know, a god, that's basically what you're saying. So for the first time ever on a lookalike, I'm going to say, I'm digging that. Somebody is comparing me to God. You know what I mean? I'll have that. Put it in there. For, I don't know why I keep doing that. I'll have to stop. Uh, and then we had Jade Adams, uh, who's a Facebook. Facebook. A Van Cam regular said, having a cheeky little punt as a lookalike. Hashtag Van Cam can call me. Can call me. What? Just putting it out there. Bastard! Look at the state of this! Kev has not got a moustache like that! And I tell you what, if that was Mov it is Mov it's November, Movember, you'd definitely be winning something for that. That is an unbelievable... It looks like he's got some kind of rodent just wrapped round the top of his lip and round the sides. Like a rat. Is that what you're saying about me? He's even copying in a picture of me. That was from when I was in Ireland in Derry, that. Happy times, that pint of harp in front of me. But to suggest that these two pictures look anything the same, Jade, I'm just not digging that sunshine, you cheeky bastard. You're all cheeky bastards. You really get on me tits. Right, next week, I will be bringing back Poetry Match Review. I will also be addressing the Van Cam Fantasy League. We need to look into that, see who's at the top of the league and more importantly who's at the bottom of the league so we can all laugh and go haha i've also got a prize for the person who wins the fantasy van cam league and you will be blown away with what the boys or, and girls at sony have sent me it's oh it's unbelievable and i just hope that i win the league because if i win it it's going under the arm and i'm taking it home with me Make sure you subscribe, like the video. I tell you this every week, it pushes my video up against other people that have got a shitload of uh, subscribers, but vi their videos might not be as good as mine. They've just got the subs. subs yeah, yeah. It's Bournemouth this weekend, and I don't think you're going to like what I'm going to say, but I am not confident at all that we're going to get three points. Eddie Howe has got that team oiled like a machine, uh, and it's going to be really tough. Hopefully, obviously, I hope that I'm wrong. Uh, because, yeah, because I'm a United fan, and that's what it's all about. Get on the Twitter, at Kevin Ashford7, Instagram as well. You know, there's all kind of shenanigans. You've seen the pictures earlier from, you know, when I was in Baller Wales. So, you know that if you're following me or whatever, you're thinking, this guy is proper mental. He's off the cuff, rock and roll. Things are going on in his life. Just need to follow him, see what he's at. And for United this weekend. Come on, United! Yeah!